welcome guys to my channel uh, today we are going to do some chemistry work and I want us to look at the sources of heat in the lab in chemistry we have some practical activities that require heat we use some apparatus to provide that heat some of the apparatus include mass and burner spirit lamp kerosene stove candle portable burner and an electric heater. The main source of heat in our common labs is the Bunsen burner. Now a Bunsen burner has three parts. It has a chimney where the air and the laboratory gas mix. We have the collar where we have the air hole, the point where air enters into the Bunsen burner and we have the base and that also contains the gas inlet which will connect us to the source of the laboratory gas. There are two types of flame given by the Bunsen burner and this is their differences. We have already seen the Bunsen burner has three parts. The chimney, the collar containing the air hole, which you can close or you can open depending on the type of flame you want. Then we have the blue part, which is the base that has a gas inlet connected to a rubber tubing. Now, there are two flames, as I've mentioned. The first is the luminous flame, which is bright yellow in color. And then we have a non-luminous flame, which is blue in color. So let me put it on. The first flame that we'll talk about is when you completely close the air hole. Now you can see the flame is already putting on some light, it's giving some light. So this flame is called the luminous flame. It has four zones. The outer one is thin and pale blue, but not easy to see. Then there's the second layer or zone called bright yellow and this is because it contains unburnt carbon particles and so if you heat it with it you're going to get soot on your apparatus and then down below we have a blue zone because there's some air mixing with the gas and therefore you get the air at that particular point and the gas are completely burned and then right inside there's an almost colorless zone now this flame is best used in the lab to avoid a fire accidents because you see the way you are, it is visible you can easily tell you have a flame and therefore it is easy to avoid an accident but when you want to heat you have now to open the air hole and therefore air enters in it mixes with the gas and therefore we have complete combustion so you can see there are three regions the pale blue which is the outer the second one is green blue and then right inside we have an almost colorless zone because there's going to be some unburnt gases this flame is the best for heating and we use the pale blue part for heating because it is the hottest part and yes it is also steady and short so every time you want to heat in the lab you make sure you're using this flame when you are not using the flame and you're sure you're going to use it again instead of putting it off you again close the air hole and you're going to take it back to the luminous flame and you can then wait until you, are, you want to use that flame in heating again now this flame you can see it's very large and also it is not steady, it is wavy. So some of the differences between this flame, the luminous, it is it produces light, it is also large and wavy. It is not good for heating because it produces soot due to the unburnt carbon particles, and it is produced when we completely close the air hole. When you open, you form this flame, the non-luminous flame which is 
short and steady. It is very hot and it is blue in color. So next time you are in the lab and you need to heat, you know the frame that you're going to use to heat and also the frame that you would use if you wanted to avoid a fire accident when practicals, practicals are ongoing. Thank you for watching.